Uh, hello, everyone. Probably started this hello a little bit late. But hey, it gives you, gives you some time to get through the ads. Um, my name, or my lack of a name, is no name 117 Spore. And today, we are back with more Rule the Waves. Um, I was actually looking at that screen. So, yeah, I'm gonna give this a, uh, just a few moments of kind of talking. So, last stream I did, we only went for a little bit more than an hour. Um, yeah. I was intending on getting to 1930, but let's just say a uh, really decisive battle happened, and I just had to put down the game for a uh, little bit. So, yeah, a couple of our ships are in repair. No. No, I don't need that reply. Alright. One of our, our, our newest battlecruiser, Vorlberg, is under repair as well as, uh, the light cruisers Dromedar and Pola. But, again, I am really, really happy with the results of that previous battle. And is somebody watching yet? I can't tell. Twitch. I'm waiting for somebody to join so I can actually start to show a couple of things. Hey! I'm here now, I think. Alright, I think it is time to show the results of that battle. If you want to truly appreciate them. That is what we got. We managed to sink a bat or a French battleship and four French battle cruisers, along with five French destroyers, for the loss of a minesweeper. Look at that points difference. Now we did have one battle cruiser mediumly damaged by a torpedo. Um, and a battleship and a light cruiser are uh, lightly damaged, mostly by gunfire. And But the French also did suffer another heavily damaged uh, battle cruiser, which I kind of probably should have gotten, but I, the ships which could have gotten it ran out of ammunition, sinking another one of the battle cruisers. So, yeah. That's the result of this battle. Of that battle. In the meantime, I should probably show the events which happened immediately after. Such as, yep, Austrian major victory, gained two prestige, and then this was the uh, victory point scores. That's a very good victory point thing, and that is what we have right now. And then it was designate this battle as decisive or memory battle for your accomplishments and uh, we did do that but I just went with the default name the Battle of Cataro which there hadn't been there hadn't really been a major battle of Cataro yet so I think it works well enough actually okay come let me extend this window to the side please thank you Alrighty then, if he's not there, we can show him the uh, pictures later, I guess. So let's go to, well, no, we have a couple more things to do before we go to the next turn. And that is, these two minesweepers should definitely be on coastal patrol. That brings us up to 26 minesweepers. Now, we did recently lose two minesweepers, so I probably want to build another couple. Now, one possible reaction, which... France is going to have to this loss is they might try to increase their submarine production. However, again, we have their destroyer force is badly damaged, or their destroyer force is badly damaged. Their light cruiser force, they still, or that is still strong for them. 
but their main navy no longer the battle cruiser force no longer has parity to us and although their battleship force still does well the battleship force doesn't quite but they're kind of close And we have a lot more base resources than them now. We do increase elevation as uh, towards and gun mounting, so that is interesting to know. Although we've had that for a while, so I wouldn't exactly be surprised. But yeah, France has a. Uh, seven capital ships now and we're sitting at 14 if we're counting uh kaiser and as an older one which again means we outnumber the french two to one however that being said the uh we can't really blockade france with the position we're in uh i could resume construction on a uh, res deck or as Dexky for a turn. Or four turns away from that submarine and then eight and seven away from these guys. That's another ten for that group. Okay, awesome. Good. And we got some more ships in service. Yeah, secure even better terms with Grisham completely. Darn it. No my friends. In shipyard hands for five months. Yep. Good job, uh, Bowkers of Carnton. So that's the worst thing which has happened here is that our top two battle cruisers are now out for a couple of months. We can get Rollberg back in two turns and Mahern back in five. So right now, that leaves Tyrol here, or Tyrol here, has our best battle cruiser, in which she is a bit old, but she is better than the French battle cruisers. I will say that. She's got the same speed, and although the French battle cruisers do have 13-inch guns, these are not good quality 13-inch guns. And now we do have a bit of money since those destroyers got back or were completed. Um, I actually want to see what France is doing. They're now building submarines. I kind of expected them to do that. And one other goal, or one other thing we could do, is we could try to build a more expensive minesweeper here. And then lay a bunch of them down. Maybe, I would say kind of similar to a destroyer escort. Although, even so, that minesweeper would just get murdered uh, whenever anything would come by. So I'm wondering if having the numbers of these uh, 200 tonners would help. So yeah, let's build more of these guys. Let's get another 12 of them going. Because I think... Ah, darn it, we lost a uh, T-15. I can take a destroyer action. No, nope. uh, we can take a fleet battle. Awesome. We can take a battleship engagement. Uh, enemy right on coastal facility. We can take that. France is like, nope, we're we're not taking that. So, hooray, hooray for us. Uh, we're gonna resume construction on uh, Ursaga or Ursaga. Urs Urzog Carl for now. And then T eighteen will be in service this turn. Darn it. So that was yeah, that was one of our good ones. That's our first battleship lost, torpedoed and sunk by a French submarine. Yeah, we need to continue to wear down this French submarine force here. 
get me another 12 of these guys, and we are going to halt construction on that battleship for another turn. Maybe we can fight on if needed. There we go. We're out of the war. Alright, so do we want to actually take any territory from France here? If anything, we take one of these three. So Tunisia, Algeria, our... Well, actually, Algeria and Tunisia. Um, Hold on. So where is Tunisia? That's over there, and then Algeria's the country next to it. Okay. So those are both Mediterranean. That would give us more Mediterranean stuff, but I'm not going to take any. So, in the last months of the war, we did lose our first uh, battleship. This is into Istvan, which is not good. To a submarine. The French submarines, I think, sunk most of our ships that war. Other than Jupiter here. Jupiter was lost in a duel. And the, or other than Jupiter and the WAGs. A lot. No, this one was sunk by a submarine as well. The French submarine sunk six of our ships that war. Oh my goodness. Alright, so now that we're out of the war, we stop the training. That will give us some money back. Uh, resume construction on him. And we're going to go back to mothballing our ships. This group should entirely be mothballed. Uh... At the very, I'm gonna mothball up to the wags, here. With uh, all these guys being moved to the reserve fleet, yeah, we took heavy losses that war. We did lose uh, one of the T-15s to a submarine. So now we're down to 13 capital ships. God damn it, France. Uh, we're going to go down to medium intel on France, low intel. Or, we're going to go down to low intel on France and low intel on Italy. Because those are the two nations we want to fight the most. One thing I'm considering about, or considering doing, is building a battleship in a German yard. They have 16 inch guns of quality zero. We want those. Those would be good guns. And I might rename the stream now. Austria-Hungary playthrough in the 1920s. There we go, because we're not at war with France anymore. It only lasted a few more months. Though they got themselves out of that war pretty quickly after we decimated their fleet. But that did that war gave me a lot of prestige. So that's good. That is very good. Now we definitely do need to do some cost trimming here. One issue we have is Lisa here is way slow. Um, actually, let's see. How many? We have seven battle cruisers, so we're going to mothball our armored cruiser and then mothball Lisa and Slavonin with, and then move all these except for Vorlberg into the reserve fleet. Although it's going to take a couple of turns for uh, Maren to come back. And once she's back, uh, I'm going to turn to the reserve fleet. Battleship-wise, we have six of them. Mothball the first three. And move the rest into the reserve fleet. And apparently got a ping on Discord. Oh, yeah, him. Oh! Okay, so you were still playing that game and then you were a little bit delayed. All right, then. Light cruiser wise, we have 11 ships. I'm going to mothball the first six and move the rest into the reserve fleet for now. Currently, are not making money. But again, that's going to change the more these ships get built. 
and the more the subs get built. Hello! So, you did miss the whole picture thing I did at the beginning. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to real quickly show that here. This was the result of the battle with the French, but they have gotten themselves out of the war now. Let, let, let this sink in. And let this also sink in that our only loss was caused by a submarine. Just look at these numbers. This especially. Yeah, France... France lost this war. They eventually peaced out. Um, although they did torpedo and sink one of our battleships with a submarine. France... Yeah, that is really devastating for the French. But, again, the French submarines... It, the French submarines were what they did really well with this war. They... I lost, I believe, three ships to uh, French or, or French uh, surface ships because, yeah, they sank. Uh, oh, what was it? Yeah, they sank a light cruiser and two destroyers with um, surface ships. Everything else, they sank ship. Or six ships in total, one battleship, and, uh, four, one, two, three, three destroyers and two minesweepers. And this one was at that battle, and it was sunk by a submarine, with submarines. Plus, during the course of the war, damaging both, uh, Monarch at the beginning of the war, and Mahren later on in the war. With their submarines. So yeah, the French submarines were basically what caused that war to not be as great of a victory for me than I thought it would be. And I kind of pieced out, or I was okay with piecing out after losing uh, Sizzlin Testvan to a submarine. But in the course of that battle, we did get two prestige and... That's a lot of victory points. So yeah, that was that was a good battle. Um, that battle's actually in the last stream, which I did put up on YouTube. If you ever want to check it out, it was it was a good battle. Alrighty then. So now we're in a uh, post-war period again. We are gonna mothball our uh, new ships. Yeah, time of relative peace. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, how did our... Move you to the reserve fleet. Mothball you. Okay, so one thought I've had is that these two ships right here are going to be obsolete. As cruisers, in terms of speed. However... In terms of armament, they're not yet obsolete. We don't have better 6-inch guns. S or uh, better layouts other than, say, the armor scheme. So, if we refit these ships... Actually, we can't get 27 knots out of Helgeland. So I think Helgeland's going to be scrapped. What we could also check is... How many knots can we get out of this ship right here? We can get 31 knots out of, uh, Sizgdavar. How do you say that, Austria-Hungary? How do you say that? How do you pronounce that word? That is not an easily pronounceable word in any stretch of the imagination. So we could refit the ship to this cost. So I will save... So, refitting it would take, or would cost 40754 and a monthly build cost of 2911 If, say, we were to build the same design, it would actually be cheaper. 
Which means that both of these ships will be scrapped. Now the other thought is that we, uh, I want to look at Lisa here. Because, uh, this ship only being able to go 25 knots is not good. So, we can get her up to 31 knots if we want. However, again, even that doesn't seem to be that great. I don't want to mess with her armament. Um, we could increase, or we could, uh, bulge her, which will take three knots off of that, bringing us to 28. So I'm going to save this, go to the design screen. It's not a very good ship. So the cost is seven, or, yeah, that's a lot of money. And a lot of money spent per month as well, and we don't have that money per month. Um, it would take 14. However... If we were to just build it, it would cost more. So that right there might be worth doing. But it would delay uh, new battle cruiser production for a year to get us something kind of lame. So I don't think I'll do that. I think for now we'll keep Lisa around, although probably in a more reserved role. Or alternatively... We could uh, bring the ship up to only 28 knots. Maybe increase the rounds per gun. And then see about this. And how much is that going to cost? Not as much. Not nearly as much. That, I think, is worth it. Although it will delay one of our battleships. So I'm going to halt one of our battleship constructions for now and let us get more of these uh, ships finished. But this will leave us with a much faster battle line. Or a much faster battle cruiser line. So the rest of our coal or the rest of our new coastal submarines are almost done. Along with them. That is actually gonna bring up our funds, which means that we can for now resume construction on that ship. Although it is gonna put us into the red, so it might be something where we have construction going on for a couple months, then turn it off for a month or two. Although more of our ships are finishing here. British 10-inch guns have better performance than ours. Not surprising. Mothball that whole group. Which means right now we have... 50 Minesweepers. That's fine. We're going to be at 52 in the end. Uh, these submarines will finish this turn. Italy is a nation I like to fight a lot. But... It's not a technology which I see is that important in the grand scheme of things. Um, it will allow them to build better armored cruisers, but I don't think it'll bite me in the ass. And I think that 4 million going into my funds right now is better. Even if I do plan on declaring war with Italy in the future. So let's get another 4 medium range submarines built. These two here are definitely obsolete, so I'm going to scrap them. And thankfully, our second uh, group of uh, T-15s is finishing up here. Plus, we did get another two Jupiter-class uh, light cruisers. Now, if we open the Jupiter design, I don't think, I still don't think we have uh, double turrets. On uh, light cruisers. Yeah, no, we don't. So the Jupiter design really isn't obsolete yet. 
in hell, I'm gonna build two more. And let our uh, destroyers here finish up. Yeah, let's get a little bit of prestige. Now that has made some of our light, cru light cruisers obsolete. I will say. That is going to be something good which we can refit onto our light cruisers over time. And hopefully with Lisa going 20... Or one, once we get Lisa back, we're going to get, you know, all that money back. Um... I don't think I'm going to send my light cruisers in for a refit for the torpedoes yet. I'm certainly considering it for the Polas and Jupiters. And probably the Dromedars as well. Well, here's what we could try to do. I'm going to send the Dromed... Mm, I'm going to send the Dromedars in for the refit. And if we delete these... That does save us some more money. Alright. So yeah, we're going to send in uh, three Dromedars for a refit. And that's kind of like an experimental sort of thing. And now mine rails on shit. Which government is... Yeah, no thanks. I don't need to be sold stuff right now. And the Dromedars are now back in service. Now armed with uh, torpedo tubes. I believe that the first one, first two should probably be mothballed and the third one put in the reserve fleet. We're going to be at a era or in an area of relative peace for a while. And training's off, right? Yeah. So we will need to get mine rails on our destroyers at some time, but I might wind up waiting for, um, better fire control for them. In the meantime, we should probably be trying to get another class of a uh, 15 or of a uh, 1500 tonner destroyers ready. Now we can't I don't think I want to do that though. Let's go up to that many knots and then yeah we can do this I do like the uh, four inch guns currently offered to our destroyer force we're gonna build four of them but we are gonna get Lisa back this turn yeah by all means purchase that I don't plan on going to war with you Britain alright so I'm gonna check what nations our US has I'm checking what guns each nation has. So I am still really heavily thinking about purchasing a uh, our next battle cruiser from Germany, which I right now might actually do. German yard. Yeah, we're gonna get steer mark, auto generate. Okay, so that is. But no, this is not the battle cruiser style we want here. Definitely not. So we This just means that we have a hull tonnage closer to the right size. I'm going to clear out all the turrets. I am going to bring that up to 120. Speed should be that. Range is going to be short since we're operating in Austria-Hungary. Turret size, we're probably going to want 16. I would say turret top 4 is accurate. Secondaries 2. Conning tower, also up to 16. The belt's going to be up to 12. I think. Of, I don't think we can afford a 4-inch deck. I think a 3.5-inch deck will have to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to equip this with 16-inch guns. Now what second... Okay, Germany actually has good uh, secondary guns, and they have a uh, director-controlled fire, or good 5-inch uh, guns, and they have director-controlled firing. So we could go to something like that.
for a secondary armament. Yeah, I know, illegal ship configuration. Of course it would be, I don't have any turrets on it yet. Ooh, Germany has Torpedo Defense 3, so yeah, we're gonna keep that on. So forward at... And then I think we're gonna go with a ship of this design right here. Although I would... I mean... I kind of want to try to get in the 10th. 16 inch gun, but I'm not sure if that would be a good idea Or the 9th and 10th 16 inch guns that would be good This this would be a very very devastating ship to build But again, we need we would need to massively increase the um, Weight or you know decrease the deck at the very least well, I'm not sure how good 28 knots is anymore. But the 16-inch guns might be pretty good. Uh, getting those on our next battle cruiser would definitely help. So if we go up to max size, I want to see. Uh, if we get... If we tone those down and then get a 3-inch deck, this is doable. We can get 10 16 inch guns on a battle cruiser. Actually, go that, and then we're gonna replace the V turret in. This will be the Bowman class. This ship will be built from a foreign yard. We can build that displacement ourselves, but we can't build the guns ourselves. So, yeah, we're gonna build this in a foreign yard. Don't question me, game. So, yes, we are now building a German battle cruiser here in our own yard. But it's, you know, this is going to be a good battle cruiser. This is going to be very high quality. The only issue is it's going to be flippin' expensive to make. So, it's going to be something where we're having to build it for a turn or two and then stop building it and then build it for another turn or two and then stop building it. And at the same time, we're probably eventually going to have to order a 16-inch uh, armed battleship from Germany as uh, Radetzky and uh, Ursag Karl get out of the, uh, oh, what, get out of the, or get into service, get out of our yards. Although we'll see. If we have better guns, then I might not do that. All right. So I guess this is kind of consider or kind of similar to like a Japanese uh, Amagi. Those that actually entered service in real life. There's another option here, I think, which I am not seeing, which I probably should have seen, and that's we do uh, this. Out to there. Back in. Uh, probably go down to there. Go out again. And then that. I think uh, that's probably good. In terms of that bit of superstructure. Line two. I will move that smokestack back a little bit. All right, line two is going to be kind of like a little bit of a tower sort of thing back there. Line three then will be doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, and then a doop. That's line three, which actually does give us the illusion that this here's a platform. And then line 
four is going to be probably, you know, something. Well, actually, you know what? Line four, we're going to start it from not, not quite there. Not quite there either. I want it further back and going further forward. Do that kind of extend the wings of the bridge out over on that side. And then bring that back to there and then back to there. All right, there you go. This will be our Bowman class battle cruiser, or the battle cruiser Bowman. Not a bad looking ship. I will actually decrease that slightly to save a little bit of money. And yeah, let's get it. And this will be really expensive and will cost us a lot per turn. It will be something where we have to build it kind of slowly right now. Okay, U.S. is offering... Ah, uh, I could get it. More armor savings. Halt Bowman for two turns. And now resume. Alright. That's an interesting dreadnought, friends. France built well armored. They actually have it decently well armored, which is probably the or the main problem of uh, why they lost uh, to Luce in that battle. However, it's only got nine fourteen inch guns and it's only got central firing, so that's very important. France doesn't have directors yet. Or if they do, they only recently got them. So that is an interesting development. Okay, we're two turns away from uh, Red Vecchi. Um, we could use... Ah, uh, hush it up. Get tensions with Russia lower. Ooh, we have a superimposed X mount on uh, light cruisers. That is going to be good. That is going to be something I make use of in uh, future cruisers. And there we go. We have our new uh, battleship. Radetzky. Or Radetzky in service. Another 12 times 12 inch guns. Unfortunately, we don't have one of our 10 times 12 inch gunships anymore. Um, the Italian government is... No. We can't afford it. Uh, yeah, uh, no, 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 no. If I'm going to go to war with you at some point in time, I'm not giving you depth charges. Yeah, we can do that. Strengthen our international standing. One turn until the uh, T-22s are in service. Awesome. Yeah, we should not buy what we can develop for ourselves. Get our last uh, T-22 in service. Okay, Italy is building... That's a really weird light cruiser. But in a gunfight, it should be easily beatable. Um, You should probably be mothballed, and you should probably be mothballed as well. Save us a little bit more money. So, one other thing I want to do is I'm going to now send in the T-15s for a mine refit. Yeah, rebuild them. And the Polas we're now going to send in. I'm going to wait until we get the two Jupiters done to send them all in for uh, their next refit. So, F and G. 
And for now, we're going to remove those two. Yeah, send the polas in. She, I'm going to resend in the dromedars just to get their mind load up. Yeah. And you know what? We have the money. Why don't we... Well, we have the time. Why don't we send in the... Uh, we'll send in the wags for a refit here, even though they are a bit old. Get, you know, ten mines on board them. Alright, that'll leave us with a little bit of money, and now we have that battleship, the German government. Yeah, yeah, buy it. Um, that's actually good, because I'm going to order another battleship from, or a battleship from then, this turn. So, battleship, we are going to build this in a German yard. No cross deck fire, increased elevation. 16 inch guns, director firing, 120 rounds of ammunition, we don't need that much speed. Ah. Uh, for now, we'll just go 23 now. In terms of displacement, bring it way up. We're going to start at 30,000. Belt armor-wise, we're probably going to want it to be maybe 15 inches. Flat deck on top of belt. Belt armor, or deck, probably 4 inches. Turrets. On the battle cruisers, there's 16, so we're going to have... 16 on each. No, turret top should probably be like four, four and a half to five, though. Four and a half. I will do five for the turret top, and then secondaries can be two. Do, 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 and a dupe, and a dupe. We are going to have all Vueler smokestacks because they look nice. Um, Just a new name. Be the no, we already had the Ween, so we're gonna build this as the Arpod class. Torpedo defense should be three. Ah, uh, gun wise, we should probably have five inch guns. I'm thinking 16 of them. Yeah, in terms of displacement, I probably want to go up to maybe 33,000. So forward and aft, forward superimposed, and aft center line. Uh, actually, I think I will go with the same layout we did in uh, the other ship. 10 16 inch guns laid out much like this, which will make the ship very expensive. Fortunate. Oh, rain. Short. Yes. Which means that in terms of displacement, we're basically build or we're basically building uh, a ship very similar to Bowman, except um, slower and with better armor. All right then. But we can also only afford one of these guys. But getting two 16-inch armed ships in service, that is going to be very helpful. So we're building a similar ship to Bowman. Why don't we just use a uh, very similar deck design? So we're going to go there. Kind of over to the side a bit. If I can. There we go. And then out again. Probably maybe that. And then uh, bring it out there. Bring it in a little bit there. And then just bring it across. We'll bring it across to there. Alright, that works. In terms of uh, smokestacks, we'll have two. And then structure-wise, we'll do, again, this type of, uh, 
Ah, uh, we could... We could bring this across. Like so. Structure 3 will be just something a little bit in the rear here. Probably, you know, kind of like that. And then structure 4 is going to be very similar to how we had it on the other ship. Actually, wait, there's another way to do structure 4 isn't there. We do that. And then, oh. Okay, let's do that and then bring it out a bit. Maybe back to there and then do something kind of like this. Bring it back. Then doop, doop, and a doop. That doesn't look too horrible for our pod. Will we order? Yeah, I know. No, I don't want to go to build dialogue yet. We're going to have a submerged torpedo tube in each side. Save. Yes, replace the design and build it. And that is going to be quite expensive. Fortunately, we are going to get a Jupiter back this turn, and we had and we got that uh, French government's interested. France is still a potential enemy. All right, so we did get our last of the T22s into service. Um, I probably want to get the T5s now refit with uh, mines. which will increase our uh, usable destroyer force. And we are getting a bunch of light cruisers back this turn, or a bunch of uh, ships back this turn out of reconstruction. Awesome. Yes, 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 yes. I will take that right there and then. We are building ships in German shipyards. We need that alliance. Thank you, Germany. You have ensured the safety of our ships. Because sometime, sometimes what uh, nations can do is if you go to war with them, they will confiscate your ships if you were building them in their shipyard. So, yeah, getting an alliance with Germany, very good. Uh, mines on these ships are going to be way more difficult to do. Mines and the Velvets, or the Veglias, could get... Is there a way to get two? Yes, there is a way to get two. There is a way to get three on them as well, in which I'm going to get three mines on all these guys. Yeah, rebuild them. How long? We don't have any Jupiters in construction, so we can start refitting the Jupiters. I believe that the Dromedars are probably supposed to be mothballed and the Pola put in the reserve fleet. All five Jupiters are going to be refit now. You can only get central firing on them. I'm not bothering to send these to a German shipyard to change that. Or torpedo-wise, we're going to get some on either side. We can delete those two and increase the number of mines they have. Send in the Jupiters to the yeah to that. Two turns until. That wag finishes up and then two turns until the uh, T5s do. I want to get these ships all refit as well. But I don't think we can yet. Uh, we could back our ally. I'll back our ally. 
Now we have 14 inch guns researched, which means I'm going to stop building ships in Germany after our pot and bowmen. Um, it, those 14 inch guns are not as good as the 16 inch guns found on our pod and bowmen, but they are better than the 12 inch guns which were previously available to me. In which I was kind of needing something better than the 12 inch guns and saw that Germany had good uh, 16 inch guns and we were on good relations with them. Which is why our pod and bowmen are being built as such. Alright, we do actually have a bit of money now, so. We're gonna be in a few. Or maybe a refit year here, where we don't have a lot of new construction, but we get a uh, lot of ships rebuilt to a newer standard. Which includes our, uh, light, our light cruiser force. And Aspern will also be rebuilt to this. Delete the two submerged mounts and 40 mines. We'll, 40 mines will do. That will make our whole light cruiser force a lot more deadly. Now the other thing is, we can get more mines by refitting these older ships. Such as the uh, older Theus, which at the same time as doing this we can also get increased elevation. Um, the Duklas. Increased elevation. It will leave them slightly overweight. But I'm willing to accept that. These are only patrol ships after all. The Origins. Open design for rebuild. Increased elevation. Six mines. The Velibits. Mines, increased elevation, save. The Zaras, increased elevation, mines, save. And the really nice thing about this is now that I'm rebuilding all of these ships, uh, I do believe it'll increase the amount of mines we can place, which is good. Because that increases the chance that an enemy ship will hit them or hit a mine during a battle um which is something i like now of course that doesn't always happen um and i have tried to lure ships into mines before to have it basically not work so that will be all of our destroyers armed with mines and all of our cruisers or light cruisers armed with mines um, after the next war, this ship's probably going to be obsolete. I will say. But it had a good run. And hell, we could probably keep it in service. That is a good technology. That is a very good technology. Which I sh Now that we've refit all of our, like, cruisers. Yeah, we're going to struggle. I will sell that to the US, though. Could no, not to Britain. I will not bother. I, I do not want to do that to Britain or anger Britain at all. That is extremely risky. All right, so yeah, no, we need directors on our cruisers. Problem is that. Go to one fight, or we could go to one director per cruiser, and just for now get the Jupiter's Polas and Dromedars refit. Polas can take two, so we'll give the Polas two. Yeah, refit them, and then send the Dromedars in. I now kind of wish I'd done this in one big refit, but... Oh, well, what can you do? Now that our destroyers are coming back... Thankfully... Yep, 
You know what? Yeah. I will take another uh, treaty with France. So we will put low spying into Russia as well then. This will cost, again, this will cost me a lot of money. Alright, destroyer wise, all of you guys should be mothballed. And all of you guys should be put in the reserve fleet. Now, I... Okay, so that does give me range finding on the destroyers. But I'm not going to bother putting that on except maybe the T-15s and T-22s for the moment. Not even that. Yeah, for now we're not going to have that. Oh, hmm. I'll put it on the T-22s. To send them in. But right now, it feels like we're just refitting ships and we haven't had new construction in a long time. And yet, we're going to continue doing this because the technologies have kept improving at such a fast pace. But, I do believe that is like the three big uh, cruiser technologies for this time. The only other thing which could really change it is... Uh, a uh, new director coming out. Alright, Spilato's finished. Uh, yeah, we will sell that to Russia for the moment. Which will give us one more turn of being able to refit our ships. And we got that, dis or that destroyer back. And then this turn, we do get a whole bunch of our cruisers back. Uh, yeah, you're an ally now. Buy it. Alright, so now that we actually do have our cruisers back, uh, mothball the dromedars, and move those guys into the reserve fleet. Probably that guy as well. That will conserve us some money, we get the rest of our ships back this next turn. Okay. Only ladder shooting, that's, that's fine. Mothball the last Dromedar, and then Mothball the first three. And now, we are actually back in the positive. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of construction we now need to do. Um, and we're barely making money. I don't think we need another class of destroyers. I do think more light cruisers would be good. And I think we're going to work on a uh, new light cruiser design in general. Can we get double turrets on light cruisers yet? No. We haven't researched that. Increase guns. We're going to bring her up to that much displacement. Uh, forward wise, we're still going to have a port forward and port starboard. Because we can. Uh, we're going to probably put a V... Or both of E and a W in. And then have a uh, L. And is it an R? No, not an R. Probably a Q. That gives us one, two, three, four, five, six turrets on a broadside. And actually, this is pretty okay. I just have to adjust a couple of things, such as this. Going back to probably here. And then we're going to do something kind of like this. And then we will have a little bit of a platform right here. Which is going to be shot over by that turret. So this isn't much different than the Jupiters. This will be the new Helgeland class. And we are going to order two of them. Awesome. New technologies. And uh, the last of our T-22s re-entered service. We don't have enough money to refit the other destroyers with uh, 
the central rangefinders, though, which would actually help in some situations. For now, I'm gonna decrease spying on Russia. Because I don't think we can afford it for the moment. I don't want to lose the prestige. Alright, halt our, our pod for a turn. Yes, buy that, please. Thank you. And now we can continue building what we're building. I might... She... It would only leave them slightly overweight. And if we reduce the amount of mines to... Say, 11. We can get... That on the T-15s as well. And it might be a good idea to get on the T-5s, but I'll, do, I'll send them in after the T-15s. Italy. Thank you. That will actually give me a little bit more money. Yeah. Prestige option. It's not like we... Or we can destroy Italy in a war anyways. Although they are getting half-decent light cruisers into service now. With uh, Ancona. So that's worrying right there. In terms of uh, battle cruisers. That's, that's a bit scary. Uh, Vetter Pisani. 8 13 inch guns, 12 inch belt, 29 knots, 40,000 tons. That is a solid battle cruiser. If I do say so myself. Um... I mean, I think we can beat it, especially once we get Bowman into service. But, yeah, that is that is dangerous. Um, they do have a Sangiorgano. Or the Sangiorganos, which aren't bad. And then Varis, or the Amalfi of the Varis class, which isn't that good. This is decent. A good compliment to the uh, Vetter Pisani. And they are working on a new one. Although, that's a few years out. The Andrea Doria class battleship. Not bad. Not too horrible, but uh, I think our battleships are better. Although, though that one is faster. And then the older Regina Elena's aren't very good. We can beat Italy, especially with both Germany and France on our side. Alright, T-15s. Finish up. Or the T-15 should be, yeah, rebuilt now. Uh, yeah, we'll buy that. Additional... Savings on the hull. T5s, I think we're going to send in for the next refit. She'll also be to a central range finder. And then we're going to have nine mines on them. Now. And I do not think I'll refit the uh, Veglias or Wags. Because I'm probably... I might still use the Veglias in fleet service. I'm not going to use the Wags anymore. Yeah, you can buy that. I need the money. Okay, cool. Can we say Italy? We can. Alright. That is concerning. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring training up. We're going to start training in gunnery. And, okay, we do have those two battleships active. Lisa right now is active, which Lisa should probably not be active. But we're going to move uh, Machen to the active fleet. And I think we're going to move uh, both T Kaiser and Tyrol. Uh, I'm going to move two more of the Jupiters. And I think a squadron of T-15s as well. In which that is going to be expensive. But do look at what we're getting in service this turn. Awesome. Okay, so then Britain now has that as a light cruiser. So that's good. These guys, we're going to move to the reserve fleet for now, but we are going to put the remaining T-15s in the active fleet. Uh, we could move the T-5s to the active fleet as well, which would give us a nice uh, set of destroyers if war is to break out. I'm getting another Jupiter. And now with four battlecruisers. And we'll do four battleships in service. With Zrini. 
that will give us a uh, nice core if uh, war with Italy is to break out. Or a nice core to the Navy if war with Italy is to break out. Submarine-wise, uh, those two are two turns out. How many submarines do we have in total now? Right now we're running with 35. All right. We need a new home-built battleship here. Uh, we're going to develop this one off of our last home-built battleship, the uh, Radetsky. In which case, uh, we're going to go up to 14-inch guns. Uh, we're going to decrease that to 2, and we're going to decrease that to 2. Belt-wise, I probably won't go up to 15. Deck-wise, I probably won't go up to 3.5. And maybe... Yeah, we'll leave the turrets at 16. Oh, yeah, director firing for secondary armament now. Cool. Do we have better... I don't think we have better 5-inch guns yet, so we are going to build this as such. Um, although, structure one I am going to change. We're going to do kind of something like that. That. Go down there. Go out again, and then... Hmm. Maybe this... For uh, this battleship. Yeah, sure. That'll work. And that turret isn't touching that conning tower, so that's good. This will be our newest uh, battleship right here. I'm not going to order another one from British or from a German shipyard, although they do have better torpedo protection than mine. So let's build that guy. This will occasionally yeah we're gonna have to hold it for a turn play on and that does actually increase tension um yep I'm not losing prestige over that Italy and right now, we are prepared for war. So, resume that construction for a turn now. Look at Bowman. Look at that beautiful battle cruiser right there. That is... That thing is better than anything Italy has. Yeah, Bowman's way better than uh, Vetter Pisani, which is... Oh, they're apparently refitting that one. I would say Vetter Pisani is probably more comparable to one of our Mahrens. Um, all our Mahrens are kind of old at this point. The uh, Rezdetskis, or the Rezdetskis, yeah, aren't quite that good either. Right now, we do have a decent active fleet, though. We can take on Italy. Oh, come on, Italy. Go to war. All right, we are going to start uh, de-readying our fleet then. Try to preserve some money. Yep, start the de-readying if tensions continue down. Uh, yeah, sure, buy that. All right, yeah, for the moment, we will de-escalate a bit. Training. Uh, stop training for now. That will give us more money. And get us a couple more submarines. Yeah, look at all that money we now have. Destroyer-wise, we probably won't build something, uh, built off the... Or off these guys. Um, yeah. These guys were designed to go 34 knots, though. Like so. We 
mean, I still think this is a good ship design right here. Four inch guns don't pack as much punch, but again, they are of higher quality than our five and six inch guns right now. One, two, three, four. Four. All right. Five more turns into the Huggerlands. Yeah, France, buy that by all means. Tensions with France, please decline. Yes, buy that. You're not a potential enemy, France. I want your tensions to decline. All right, the Huggerlands. Oh, that's going to be good. And now that right there is actually probably worth a uh, blank refit for a lot of our uh, battleships. So, yeah. Such as this guy. So I believe that will mean he won't jam. And this guy. So I believe that means his turrets won't, or her turrets won't jam either. Um, three turns into Larpod. Yeah, why not? Look at that. <laughs> oh, this would be great if war were to break out, like, right now. Because this would just be insane. Hugoland is in service. Uh, uh, hmm. This is a tough decision. View Almanac. What quality are our guns? It, nation data. Only says we have 9-inch guns. Right now we... No, I'm not getting them. One turn into Larpod, uh, one turn into Hugaland, or the next Hugaland's in service. We have one Hugaland in service now. And let's see, what else had? See, most of our 12 times 12 in ships did have it. Susan Testvon didn't. But yeah, all of all those ships did. You are also going to go in. You're going to go in for the blank refit, Lisa. Uh, I don't think the Slavonians did, no. But Tyrol didn't. But I do believe the Mahrens. Yeah. We're going to send in the Mahrens for a uh, blank refit now. Oh, I didn't actually have increased elevation on the Mahrens. So yeah, send them in. Okay, Carolina is commissioned. Our pod is now commissioned. And that is a really good battleship. Right there. So now we do have two 16-inch armed ships. Now we're looking at Italy. Um, they did get... No, that was built before. They didn't get anything new built, really. We look at the nation data. Yeah, look at that money. Um, we're only barely behind Germany. In terms of our naval budget. And I'm actually curious. Base resources? Yeah, we're a little bit behind. I mean... Yeah, we have way surpassed France in terms of uh, base resources now. We're doing well. I'm I'm content with this. I like playing Austria-Hungary though. And 45 prestige, that's that's good. Um that's solid. Although I think people who have a contest to see how quickly they can get to a certain prestige and even like 100. Um at when I'm whenever I'm done with this game, what I'm going to probably do next with uh, World of Waves is a daytime stream. Um a, a proper stream, you know, Somewhere between the act or between the uh, actual morning where people are awake and the uh, evening, somewhere in that time period, playing the U.S. with the goal to just get as much prestige as possible, which you can do as the U.S. completely. All right, so we are going to need more light cruisers, but right now we are in a refit period again because I want to get these turrets jamming less. So Monarch. You go in. Zrini, you get a refit. And this should be making my triple turrets better. Kaiser, you get a refit. Director, firing. 
As long as war doesn't break out. Super soon. You too. Refits. Uh... No, none of the other ships would need a refit. Alright, there we go, cool. And you haven't had a refit in a while, so we're going to give you one. No, no, no. Hold on. Open design for rebuild. You should probably have more ammunition. Yeah. Alright, cool. So... Uh, uh, yeah, sure, we'll buy it. Weight savings with machinery. I'm going to get another couple, uh, light cruisers into service again. Although, are people building more armored cruisers yet? I don't think they're really building more armored cruisers yet. Russia still has those couple. Germany is building one. Britain's building one. France... Does have a few? Yeah, it does have some. Some newer ones, actually. So we could probably start building an armored cruiser soon. But I that's expensive. I'd rather get a battle cruiser anyways. Um, but the battle cruisers now are going up in size. Uh, most of our fleets being refit. So, I'm going to open up the Hegeland design. And... Let's just do this since we don't have uh, the turrets we want for these light cruisers well there's another idea and that is that we order them from a, another shipyard probably a German one so if we go to Germany can we get a double turret yeah ship must have a fire control system put a director on it uh, Germany can't France in France? No. Alright then, so I say we just build, or I say we build a uh, slightly modified uh, Hugeland, although we probably want to get a uh, 30 knot light cruiser here soon. So that will massively increase the size. But, you know, this is, this is a half decent ship here. Well, we can also bring up the mine count. Uh, let's get that. To... We're going to have to replace all the funnels as well, I think. And just, yeah, get all that sorted out. This will be a, a new graphic. Entirely new graphic for the new cruiser. And third funnel back there. Uh, structure 1 is again going to go in front. Structure 2 is again going to go like this. We've have, or I've liked the super, or I've liked the superstructure design, so I'm not changing it yet. Go out a little bit, and then down, and then across. Structure 3 will be our, uh, will be that, and then structure four, we will just have a little thing on the back here. Um, probably, I don't know, we can do a little bit of that. Doop, 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 doop. That works. Ah, uh, we will name this cruiser the Pilates yeah. and we will order two of them and we have the money to afford that for now and once our ships are done we're probably going to order a, uh, another battle cruiser yes you are an ally with us buy it and there we go some ships have now finished oh Britain, don't be interested in war, Britain. I don't want to go to war with you. 
Our pod in service. Lisa should probably be mothballed. I'm going to move Mahan to the reserve fleet. And one more turn until those guys. Yeah. Yeah, buy that. France. France didn't actually have that, apparently. It's funny. France is so keen to working with us after, you know, we sent, like, half their fleet to the bottom. Last war. So then, in terms of battleships, we have that whole group. So all of you guys are probably going to be put in the reserve fleet. Alright. Yeah, we'll keep that active right now. You should probably be mothballed, though. Is that all of our battle cruisers? It is. And then we just have one more battleship. So battleship wise, that would be nine and four of them are mothballed. Okay, that's that's good. That's right where we want to have it. And light cruiser wise, I'm probably gonna move the Jupiters to the reserve fleet and mothball Pola. How many light cruisers do we have? Fifteen. So that's seven. Yes, that is the correct amount. And now that we do have money. I'm going to take a look at this ship currently building and how we can convert it to a battle cruiser, which would be stuck with a 12 inch belt, but in terms of speed would be able to go at least 28, probably, probably want to push it 29 knots now. Like probably that fast. And then that right there can be star mark. Although, this back here you might want to change. Yep, I think this will be star mark. Uh, we can't get better torpedo protection. Yep, that's a that's a decent ship. So it's as well armed as our battleship. It's not quite as well armored. But for the time, it should be well enough armored. Although, eventually we are going to need to increase that turret armor on warships we're building. But I don't want to yet. And then there's Red Decky. Uh, yeah, sure. Give me more money. Um, so yeah, move Rezdeki to the reserve fleet. But we are getting closer to war. If I do say so myself. T-28's now in service. 10-inch guns, quality 1. That is actually going to make uh, additional armored cruisers appealing now. And we are getting another class of 1,500-ton uh, destroyers in service. So... The WAGs and or the WAGs are definitely gonna be relegated to coastal patrol with their three torpedo tubes. The Veglias we might keep in uh, main fleet service. The T fives are definitely gonna be main fleet service, the T fifteens are definitely gonna be main fleet service, the T twenty twos are definitely gonna be main fleet service, and the T twenty sixes are definitely gonna be main fleet service. They're all good enough. And now there is no more point in building additional dock size. We're at the maximum uh, limit for ships we can build. Yes. Gradual AP penetration improvement is good. War is looking more and more imminent, but hope hopefully we can keep these alliances. If we don't keep the alliances, I'm very, very scared. We do keep the alliances. We might be able to take Ital Italy and Britain in war. Now I might uh, open design. Okay, thirty-four knots. Sixteen. Fine. We don't yet have. Those guns. Do we have... I don't have super firing turrets on 
destroyers yet either, so I'm going to build another, well, I'm going to modify the T-26 just to get that extra weight savings. This will be the T-30, and we will build four of them. will give us a little bit of, a, of uh, leftover funds for some coastal submarines, I think. Right. So how these guys are all 1921, so probably in about 1929 we'll want to send them all in for refits. Britain has 22 battleships. They're best to have, you know, 10, 16 inch guns and are 25 knots capable. Well, we, our best have also, ha our best has 10, 16 inch guns. Probably better armor as well, but it's slower. Yeah, we have way better armor than that. That's a glass cannon. Yeah, so the British battleships are very much glass cannons here, but they have a lot of them. Oh, that's actually pretty powerful. Well, not pretty powerful. That's I think that's like a Queen Elizabeth type design of the ship. In terms of their battle. Yeah, the oldest British battleships are still in commission as well. Or the oldest British uh, dreadnoughts are still in commission. In terms of battle cruisers, yeah, it's pretty scary, although I I will say it, Bowman's actually pretty good for a battle cruiser. And now we are getting our 14 inch battle cruisers in service. Um, home designed. 8 inch guns quality 1, that is good. Uh, so that's HMS Queen Mary. Government is, uh, no. Oh, hey, we got it anyways. Um, we developed it that turn, so that's good. Uh, yeah, French government is, yeah, we will sell that to them. Because we are allies. Yes, you can have that. Unexpected advances in submarines, cool. Ah, oh, crap. Russian government is interested in buying diesel generators. Yeah, sure. France being out of the conflict is worrying me. Okay, what... Na okay, Britain has 24 battleships and 6 battlecruisers. Which means that they have 30 capital ships. Italy adds another 8 to that. We have um, 16 capital ships, kind of 17 if you count the armored cruiser, but I'm not going to count it. Russia has uh, 11. So 16 plus 11 is 27. Germany has 19. Okay, 37. That would be... 46. So that's 46 capital ships against 38. We would have the capital ship advantage in or if war were to break out. However, Britain can concentrate a lot more of those capital ships together, which we cannot do. Oh my god, Italy. What the hell? Increase buying on each of them to medium. Yeah, by all means, buy it. Alright, training. Training, come on. Gunnery, get that right now. I don't care. Uh, activate more of our ships. Move Monarch. Move, yeah, move those guys into the reserve fleet. Uh, we're going to get our Slavonians into the reserve fleet as well and activate uh, Mahan and Tyrol. In terms of light cruisers, we are going to activate four of the Jupiters. This is going to be expensive, but we have built up a lot of money. Uh, and at the same time, the T5s are going to go active. With the WAGs going into the reserve fleet. Oh. Yep. 
Yep, there's the war. Convoy attack large. I think we can take it. Britain is going to get dragged into the war. Our allies are going to get dragged into the war. This is going to be interesting. I'm thinking about calling it after this convoy attack, though. Um, real possibly. So we have two battleships here. Azdeki and Ursag Karl. Along with the battlecruisers Vrolberg and Machen. Oh, we have Tyrell and Bowman as well. Uh, Tyrell and Bowman form up on Rezdeki as a core group. Uh, could have been a lot worse. Uh, the convoy is somewhere down there. Unknown ship sighted. Okay, cool. Alright, we are going to sail you guys down. You guys go to squad max and we'll see what we can do. It might be a case where we try to lure the uh, battle... The uh, protection off of the convoy. And into the jaws of the main... Or of our battleships. Alright, so that is... Okay, that's their battlecruiser group right there. Turn a bit. However, how fast can we go? 23 knots. Make your way down south still. We have hit one. Uh, we're going to turn Vorberg and Machen up north. These only have... Okay, that's... Oh, that's... That's good for us. Because these... I mean, they do have 13-inch guns. But again, this... Or this one only has 12-inch guns. It has four of them. And that one does have 13-inch guns, but only six of them. The belt armor on... On Varys is okay. On, Sen on the Sengir Gano, it's not good. In the meantime, we actually have good belt armor and good turret armor, plus the uh, much better guns. For some reason, they are hitting a lot closer to us, though. Alright, you guys are going to angle up that way, and you guys are probably going to go 20. Alright, we have scored a few hits. Medium damage, and that's probably damage as well. That is that looks like a second battleship division pushing up though. Vorberg has taken a penetration to the hull. And those two ships are turning around. So you guys are gonna for now steam up this way. Turn onto that course. Alright. That's another group of uh, Italian battlecruisers, the Vetter Pisani and the uh, San Giorgano. So that Vetter Pisani is the scary one. 12-inch belt, 12-inch turrets, uh, 8 13-inch guns. If those are, if those 13-inch guns are of decent quality, that's a very scary ship. However, what we can do... Um, is now our battleship forces involved. Yep. Uh, turn slightly to get all of your guns firing. You guys, turn that way slightly. Get all of your guns firing on this better Pisani class, please. Take him out. We are have scored a hit. Or another hit. They're pushing a battleship up through. Mahrin has taken a penetration. Or penetrating hall hit. Alright, they have an Andrea Doria class uh, battleship. 8 times 12 inch guns. Okay, that's interesting. Three more hits on the Vetter Pisani. That's good. Uh, you guys aren't going to have all your turrets firing much longer. So do a quick turn. Kind of like that. We have scored hits on all these guys now. So it looks like that first battleship or battle cruiser division we saw is forming up here. Um, that I don't know if that's a battleship or a battle cruiser right there. That could be forming up on the Andrea Doria. That Vetter Pis or that could also be the other one from the Vetter Pisani. 
But it is looking like there's five Italian capital ships in this area. But we do have six over here. Um, including the 16-inch armed uh, bowman. Which is going to be our... Uh, that's going to be a great ship. Let's just say that. We have definitely hit this Varese class. Uh, what are you guys actually firing at? Target lines. So you guys... Right now, most of you are focused on the Vetter Pisani. That's good! Oh, we have... Oh, that's good. That right there is really good. We've taken out two of their turrets. Or two of her turrets. Um, She's not sunk. And it is only showing light damage. But we've taken out half of her firepower for the rest of this battle. Yeah, that's good. Um... Bowman's crew quality is actually one. Um, Tyrol's a zero, unfortunately. I'm hoping Bowman's getting some hits in here. One more thing we should have on. Torpedo range. This is very helpful. Knowing our torpedo range, um, means we can keep the enemies roughly at bay with their, their torpedo range. Although their torpedo range could be better than ours. We can assume it'll be similar to ours and that, um, a similar distance must be kept to them to prevent them from, uh, hitting our ships with torpedoes. Now, those guys are firing at them, and looks like Bowman's currently firing at the Varese, while Tyrol's still firing at the Andrew Doria. You guys were south a bit. Alright, that and Kona is in a risky position. You guys turn... Now what? has happened or an interesting oh god yeah no they're gonna get uh Helgeland and Jupiter at this point we're going to pull the battle cruiser division up north again try to uh intercept these guys however our battleship division is going to pull off here oh my goodness they are gonna sink some of our light cruisers the ass or the bastards. All right. All right. So Vorberg and Mahern, you guys have to start moving up and have to start dealing with these enemy ships. You guys down here. Yep, Jupiter is sunk. All right. So Helgeland's evading. Well played on the Italians' part, though. You guys go squad max, though. Alright, we might be able to continue hitting that uh, San Giorgano class. However, that Andrew Doria has turned around to deal with uh, Vorarburg and Machern, but that has given uh, Carolina and Helgeland some relief. But well, well played, Italy. All right, we're gonna send our battle cruiser division south. Our battleship division is start is gonna start moving north. The battle cruiser division, um, attempting to intercept the convoy. In the meantime, it looks like the... Okay. Yeah, no, Carolina, you've got to get out of there. Uh, what are you? You're a scout for Rezdeki. We have very heavily damaged that uh, San Giorgio. Uh, no flotilla attack yet. Yeah. Going save uh, survivors from that ship. In the meantime, Vorarburg and Machen will try to hit the convoy. Looks like, yeah, Italy's trying to get that uh, San Giorgio out of there. Um, in the meantime, we are going to continue pursuing their uh, main fleet. And it looks like we are now chasing the Italian light cruisers. 
Yeah, Jupiter is sunk. But we are picking up survivors. There's the trader fleet, right there. That is the convoy which we need to be attacking. Unfortunately, they are hitting Carolina pretty hard. So we might lose uh, that ship as well. So that's uh, ships escaping. We've hit one of the Ancona. And we are starting to hit those uh, cruisers. Or the merchants, I should say. Heavy damage, sinking, heavy damage, and heavy damage. Um, you guys are going to do a turn this way. Ah, that might actually be a torpedo run right there. In the meantime, we have caught one of the enemy Varese classes. Carolina is still afloat for now. And the sun is setting. How are you guys doing with this? You at the very least uh, taking out these merchants? Because otherwise, we are going to start retreating here. Yep, I think the merchants are down. Alright, you guys move in this direction. Yep, traders are sunk. Just to make sure our main fleet is evacuating this way. Alright, so... We lost a cruiser, but we did complete the mission. We have done heavy damage to Italian ships. And you guys are probably going to want to go to cruise speed as well. Alright then. I hope that we've sunk one. That's my, or I hope we sunk an Italian battle cruiser here. There is a chance we did. I do not know how. One, one or two of those were very badly damaged, and there is the possibility they could founder during the night. However, damage control techs at this point in the game are good, and unfortunately, we did lose a light cruiser. Um, fairly good one as well. Oh, it's daytime already. That was a pretty short night. Because it's summer. Should probably pay attention to the month. But the convoy, I believe we sunk almost every ship in it. Yeah. Sunk seven auxiliaries. We did sink a battle cruiser and we did sink a light cruiser. There we go. That is redemption. That went well. Which battle cruiser sunk? Umbria. Um, the San Giorgio, which, uh, was eventually going away. So it tried to get away quickly and then had high speed increased flooding followed by a bulkhead rupture. Um, lots of limits flooding and then eventually it sunk. After good amount of hits. Battlecruiser Amalfi of the Varese class took uh, several hits. I think including a few 16-inch hits from Bowman. Better Pisani. Uh, both of the rear turrets were destroyed. However, the flotation on the ship was still good. So it took a lot of 12-inch hits. Um, battleship Andrea Doria took three 12-inch hits. Um, where is the other... Sin, oh, that was another Italian battle cruiser. Where's uh, 
Who's that telling battleship? The other one. Or did they only have one? They might have only had the Andrea Doria. Um. So yeah, this was the ship I was hoping to hit with the 16-inch guns, and it looks like we weren't able to do that. I should also look at how uh, Bowman did. In terms of our battle cruisers, Vorberg did take a few hits. Actually, what what quality are the Italian 13-inch guns? Zeros. So those are kind of scary. Those aren't negative twos. Those are zeros. Those are proper. Bowman scored nine hits with its main battery guns. So one hit on a Malfi. Looks like four hits on a Malfi. And a few hits or split between a Malfi and Umbria. So Malfi did get away from that because her armor helped her out, but she was pretty damaged and Umbria was also pretty hurt. But I think we had to disengage from Amalfi due to the nighttime setting. We definitely won that battle. Uh, which... Okay, so we sank one of the Anconas, which eventually flooded. Yeah. And... Did lose... But we did lose Jupiter as well. Which wasn't that great. Jupiter took a lot of hits and eventually sank. So, it's a win, though. We opened that battle with a good win. Battle of Sicily. Save. Well, no, wait, no. Mobilize. But I'm going to call it here. After we get our ships ready for the next turn. There we go. 98 ships on patrol. We are going to be at war with both Italy and Britain, however. In which that might wind up with us being blockaded. And However, we do have Germany and Russia on our side. So that might keep British ships in the, uh, or up here. If we look at how much Britain has down here, it's not a lot. And we have a lot more than Italy right now. Especially after we sank that. Ah, it would have been nice to have uh, another battleship, though, I will say. But hey, we have this, and our pod, our pod will be good. We will... And next turn, we will be getting another battleship in service. However, I'm calling it here. This has been No Name 117. I am signing off. Uh, next game, we're going to fight this war with Italy. And yeah, I'm a little bit hungry, and... Yeah. I don't know, I, I kind of, when we start getting to the 1920s, and especially the 1930s, I feel like the game kind of becomes a little bit less fun. I feel like armor and battlecruisers become less important then, although fast battleships uh, also become. But again, the game's really not designed to be played past those times, and it does kind of seem that's where the game starts breaking down. Especially in like the 30s and 40s, so we might wind up going to um. No, we're gonna we we're gonna finish this war. We might end at 1940. We might go all the way to 1950. But yeah, for now, that's been me. It's been Noni Moon Seven. Thank you for whoever watched. Mostly you, Sampa. And I will see you next time. And I will make sure to upload this to YouTube. And also, watch that battle sometime. The battle against France. Goodbye.